What's right. going on, everybody? My name is Adam Nelson. I'm the founder and CEO of Philly Esports, and I'm incredibly stoked to be talking to everyone today because I'm joined today by Corporal Flores from the United States Army Esports team. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and, and, and do a quick interview for the for the live Rocket League tournament we're doing right now. To tell everyone a little bit about who you are, where you come from, and how you got to join in the military and being on the esports uh, esports team there. So my name is Corporal Flores. I'm part of the Texas Army National Guard. I'm the National Guard liaison here at the U.S. Army Esports, and I also manage the Rocket League team. Now, uh, how I got into this is, you know, playing Rocket League, right? So ran into one of the Army Esports players. They said, hey, come join our Discord. We're having tryouts. You know, I take a crack at it and I make the team. Tell a little bit about your story about how you got into gaming. Where did you grow up? How did you discover games? And, and like, what really brought you into video games and, and then eventually into competitive games? I'm from a little small town called Rio Hondo in Texas at the very south southmost tip uh, of Texas by South Padre Island, right? Now, how I started into gaming is just like everybody else. I was a little kid. And I got a Super Nintendo, and that was the best thing ever. I remember playing some Star Wars game that was super difficult. Halo 2 LAN parties were a blast. One of my close friends, best friends now, we lived right down the street from each other. We met up, we're like, hey, you play Halo 2? Turns out we we're both freaking good at it. So we ended up getting kicked, not kicked out, uninvited from LAN parties because we would 2v8 people. <laughs> and absolutely oh, destroy them. From then on, I knew that competition is for me in the in the esports realm, regardless of the game. So let's talk a little, about, a little bit what drew you into the army. Tell your story of how you realized one day that you wanted to join the military and serve your country. Since I live in Texas, freaking rolled through. Uh, my town was basically flooded. After everything happened, the National Guard shows up and they're helping us out. They're bringing us food. And that was something that really struck a chord with me, you know, being able to help others, because sometimes I see things on TV you know, all these things happening and, you know, they're like, hey, donate this or send that. But I'm more of a hands on person. So I joined the National Guard, right? The Army National Guard. Now, fast forward a few years, Hurricane Harvey happens. And I remember sitting there and seeing on the TV screen all the flooding people, you know, losing their homes. I get that text from my uh, from my squad leader saying, hey, we're getting mobilized. We're already expecting it, of course. And I had my gear ready to go. And then I, be I believe 24 hours later, I was on a C-130 flying over to Houston. And it's it's one of the most fulfilling experiences of my life. And being able to help them out because that, you know, that could have been me or it was me to a degree. And being able to help others was just something that I, it's why I continue to serve. Uh, can you educate people out there a little bit more about if they were to decide to join the military and they really want to play on the esports team, what does that actually look like? And what are the steps to get there as someone who enlists today? One of the biggest things and misconceptions that people have is that once you join the army, you don't have time for anything else. There's a ton of different jobs. Not every job is kicking doors down and doing cool guy stuff. We have some people that are HR specialists. We have people that set up networks in hospitals and basically are IT essentially, right? We have people that work with intelligence agencies as intelligence analysts. If you join, you essentially join, you learn your skill, your job, and then you get assigned to a duty station if you're active duty, or you go back to your reserve station if you join the Army Reserve. All you have to do is join our Discord, the U.S. Army Esports Discord, and we have tryouts for every competitive title. If you do go and try out for one of these teams and you get selected to join one of the Army Esports teams, what does that process look like? One is obviously you have to go through the stages of tryouts and you have to be the best out of that group. Now from there, as a member of the Army U.S. Army Esports team, you get to compete on behalf of the U.S. Army Esports. This is either in varying tournaments, uh, tournaments which are invite only, and also, one of the bigger key bonuses is you get to play with a bunch of influencers. Obviously, you're playing at a high level and representing the Army, but then now you get to play alongside these pros. And for a lot of our players, these are their, their heroes that, hey, when I get home, I watch Twitch and I watch TV, right? And now I get to play with them in a game. Imagine how many of their, his fans would want to have the option to play with them. Before joining the military, what skills did you gain from playing video games that directly attributed to being in the military? Before you joined the esports team, before you tried out or anything like that, what skills did you already have from being a gamer that instantly um, you know, uh, translated to being in the, in the army? So teamwork, communication, and working under pressure, which ironically you perfect in the army, right? But it's one of those things of, if you're a serious gamer and you play competitively, that's second nature, right? Your call-outs have to be on point. In Rock League, if, hey, you got demoed or, hey, I'm low on boost, somebody needs to back up or you, you know, jump rotation, you need to have those comms up. 
and just popping off all the time. And obviously, you know, working under pressure because it's overtime, it's game seven. If if you lose or you make a simple little mistake, that's it. So working under pressure is, it just comes in hand in hand. So a lot of people think it's super hard to be a soldier. You get trained very well on how to do it. So it's, yeah, all of that stuff just like starts clicking. You're like, wait, I can do this. So while you've been in the military and you've been playing esports, what new skills have kind of popped up that are definitely going to help you in, in the future? So one is like right now being in front of a camera, uh, definitely streaming and being exposed to all that, especially when you're representing like the US Army and organization, right? Uh, second is the same points that I just touched on. You sharpen and polish it makes you a better competitor because your comms they get more crisp more concise you're uh working under pressure easy you just like get in those moments where you need ice in your veins so little things like that and it, it really complements and just helps make you better and you get this life experience that a lot of people don't get on the civilian side so uh talk a little bit more about what you, from someone who's been in the military who served who's, who's played on one of the the teams What's probably one of the biggest misconceptions that the general public has about the Army and the esports team? People forget that after we're done with our duty day, we have regular lives. Everybody has their own hobbies. For us gamers, hey, we go home and game. I have like two PCs behind me with a ton of graphics cards and stuff. And other people like do the same thing. They live in the barracks. They have a crazy setup. All the RGB you can think of. Uh, everybody watches anime. Like it, people forget that we're a direct representation of the population. Different places, we have discords where we hang out for our own companies, our own units. And we get there and we gain. And we join these little tournaments. And within our own companies, we have little fun tournaments and events that we do. Because even before online gameplay was a thing, people were playing in the barracks. They were having tournaments. Just little hosh posh, little lands. And it's always been a part of the military culture. And now now it's finally coming tonight to like because remember back in the day when nerds were like oh you're a nerd now it's like everyone's a nerd right we have lives outside of our regular jobs and even with our jobs not everything is infantry we have so i think we have like over 100 plus jobs yeah and i, and I think it's super important to stress that those who serve in the military are just as just as much people as anyone who isn't serving uh just because you don't on a uniform doesn't mean that you're somehow you know not not a person anymore or anything like that. Tell me a little more about your favorite Rocket League memories of all time through your time in the military, through your time in esports, especially through the Army esports team. I remember when I was first joining the US Army esports team, I was in the middle of a move. So I was moving from one apartment to another, but I had like a week period. So I stored all my stuff away and me and my wife stayed with my parents for that week. And that was the week of the world finals. Justin scored that crazy overtime goal or, or like the zero second goal, which was just mind blowing. I slammed my desk, I stood up and I said, let's go. <laughs> it was amazing. I still get goosebumps watching that video. Yeah. The other two moments would be obviously going to the RLCS World Championships. I went to Vegas and I went to Jersey. And I met other people, especially at, at the Jersey one, that were part of the US Army Esports Discord. So I was able to meet them IRL, which is super cool. That's probably like one of my favorite moments uh, in Rock League and while I was serving is, hey, you know, I took leave to go out there and I, I just went on vacation like anybody else, right? Except, you know, I went to Vegas, not for the other stuff. I went to Vegas for Rock League, totally worth. So Corporal Flores, before we wrap up here today, what what's the final message you want to send all the gamers that are competing today and everyone out there who's interested in potentially uh, learning more about the Army? Um, what, what's your final message for them? And then how can they find you after this interview? Absolutely. So the biggest thing is with the United States Army, it's not for everyone. However, definitely take a look. For some people, it's a stepping stone into your final stage of your careers. You can gain experience or get your school paid for, but make sure it lines up with your plans. It is definitely a viable option and it's something that you should consider. Uh, you can find me on Discord and on uh various social media platforms, but definitely follow us at twitch.tv, US Army Esports, for all our socials, for YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. Obviously, you're yeah. Juice in the Army Esports Discord, mm -hmm. which is open to anyone to join, right? Or is it only for service members? Yes. Yeah, so you just uh, follow the vetting process. You send in an email and walk through the registration process. That way, make sure we get you taken care of. Uh, one last message out to the competitors today. Good luck, be clutch, and have fun. All right. Thank you so much. We'll be seeing you again soon.